uh, we continue with the studies through the book of uh, Hebrews. Again, we are edging closer and closer to the end of this book, and today we come to verse 8, which is one of the most glorious verses in the world of Scripture. So kindly turn to Hebrews 13, we shall read verse Verse 7 all the way to verse 17. <clears throat> Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips. That acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are, they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. We turn to the Lord and ask him for help. Oh, dear Lord, our God, we know that apart from you, we can do nothing, even as we were reminded this morning. And Lord, we have your word before us, and how can we understand it unless you open it up for us and give us uh, the correct understanding and help us to grasp the full intensity and the depth and the height of your word by your spirit. Wherever we are, whatever our circumstances may be, Lord, we look up to you to give us the grace to hear this word and to understand and to receive it with all the humility. Give us contrite hearts that trembles at your word, O oh Lord. Do help me, Lord, as I seek to deliver your word to your people that I would be clear and simple and precise in making Christ Jesus known. And these I ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This is a very well-known verse. On Friday evening as I prepared this message, uh, uh, Gaius came to me and uh, uh, he saw on the screen on my computer this verse. And he said, I know that verse. I know a song uh, that captures that verse. And so he went on to sing, Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. We may change, but change, uh, we may change, but Jesus never changes. Glory. To him. That's a song that Gaius, uh, uh, who is six and a half years, sang for me. So, this is a very well known verse. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Uh, what a glorious verse! It's very precise, it's very clear, but it's also a very Christ centered verse. And it's one of the reasons why we need to remember 
those preachers, faithful preachers of the past centuries. They were men who proclaimed Christ as the same yesterday and today and forever. And it's a reason why we shouldn't be led uh, away by strange teachings, diverse and strange teachings as they are called there in verse 9. Because this kind of a verse and truth has that power and potential to strengthen us in grace. And so I want to urge you then to uh, receive this word very, very clearly and keenly as you listen to the fact that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, this verse, as I said, would be the brightest star in this galaxy of truths called Hebrews. Thank you. Because Christ Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And if all I did today is repeat that fact that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, it would suffice. Now, that's not what I'm going to do. I wish to show you how Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And, and I suppose this particular verse is so relevant to our day. You know, we like hanging out with dynamic friends and we want to choose and elect dynamic leaders and we want to be led by dynamic uh, leaders. But uh, Jesus Christ, I'm afraid, is not the changing Jesus. The one who today is like that, tomorrow is like the other. And so we will be asking ourselves, in what sense is Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever? And we will ask ourselves, how is that relevant to our perseverance in the faith? Because this book has been written to encourage Christians to persevere in the faith to the end, to remain steadfast, to endure, and remain faithful in the faith forever until we see the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. The difference between us and God is that while God is unchangeable in His being, in His wisdom, in His power, in His essence, God is unchanged in His wisdom and in His glory. God is immutable. But we are ever-changing, growing. And we go and visit friends and see their children who were toddlers just the other day. Now they are teenagers. They are taller than ourselves. I just found out recently that Asaph is now taller than me. And, and that just shows how changeable we are. But God is not like that. God exists, exists eternally as God the Father, God the Son, uh, God the Holy Spirit. And the Father is unchangeable. The Father is immutable. But also the Son is immutable or unchangeable. And the Spirit as well is unchangeable and immutable. Just like each of the persons of the Trinity is immutable. That's a doctrine of divine immutability. And it's a doctrine that communicates how dependable and trustworthy God is. And as we trust in Him, we know that He is the same. And so the message this morning then is that uh, we should trust in the never-changing Christ. Trust in the never changing Christ. I want you then to consider four things. One, it's how 
Jesus Christ is trustworthy. And then secondly, I want you to consider that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. And that uh, thirdly, Jesus Christ is the same today. And finally, that Jesus Christ is the same, not just tomorrow or the day after, but forever. Jesus Christ is the same forever. So those are the four points that I would like us to bear in mind. So in the first place, the trustworthy Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ is trustworthy, then it means you ought to trust in him this morning without any further delay. The first part of that verse simply says Jesus Christ. And this is the emphasis of this verse. Jesus Christ, the proper noun, the name of a person, the second person of the Trinity. The name Jesus Christ refers to the divine person of the triune God of the Bible, the person who accomplishes our salvation. He is called Jesus Christ. And we are told something about Jesus Christ. But before we find out why we should trust him, let's seek to understand those names. The name Jesus means Savior. It's the same as Joshua. Uh, he is the deliverer. Mary was told by the angels, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. On the other hand, the word Christ is actually not the surname of this person Jesus. It is not his family name. It is the title of his office. And it means the anointed one. In Hebrew, it's the Messiah. And that combination then of the Savior who is the Messiah is our subject of not interrogation, but the subject of meditation and adoration this morning. And that combination, he is Jesus Christ, the Savior, the promised Messiah, the anointed one by whom sinners are brought to a great loving relationship, enduring and perpetual relationship with God, the infinitely holy God, is reconciled with sinners by this person, the Lord Jesus Christ. This combination of Jesus' names, very interesting, is only used three times like this in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, we are told, and by that will, by that will we have been sanctified, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And then this author is saying here that the body of Jesus Christ, in other words, God, the second person of the Trinity, became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we have seen his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, John 1, 14. And he has offered the body. The body of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ has been offered. Not twice, but once and forever. Once and for all. And the other reference is in the doxology in chapter 13. If you look at uh, uh, that doxology there, we are told that equip you, uh, if I may read the world, the world passage, verse 20, 
Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, walking in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And that should be our response whenever we hear this wonderful name, the Lord Jesus Christ. We should pour adoration and praise and doxology. And it's very significant then that the Spirit of God, by inspiration, led the author to talk about Jesus Christ in the fullness of those terms and names in only those three verses, although he makes reference over and over again to the Lord. So Jesus Christ was sent by God to become a man, to die on the cross, to bear the sins of the many in his body, to become a ransom for our sins. Christ, therefore, is... Jesus Christ is there for God-man, one person, two distinct natures. The name Jesus underscores is humanity, for he was made like us in every way. Uh, the, the, except for sin, we read in uh, chapter 4, verse 15. So being Christ, he was anointed at his baptism by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed, he says to us in in Luke chapter 4, he was anointed to proclaim good news to the poor and liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is the long-expected Messiah, the long-expected prophet after the manner of Moses. This is the long-expected son of David by whom the Lord God will rule his people forever. He is the son of David. This is the son of man who is to bring deliverance and hope and salvation to a fallen, fallen humanity steeped in sin. He will deliver them from their sins. So this is Jesus Christ, David's son, yet David's Lord. This is Jesus Christ, Son of Mary and Son of God. He entered into the priesthood, not after the manner of the Levitical priests, this old has been telling us, but after the manner of Melchizedek. He has been appointed priest forever after, the, after Melchizedek to be the high priest in our place to represent us before God with the sacrifice of himself to die our sins and to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is Jesus Christ according to the word of God who is to be trusted. And when you hear those words, you are comforted if you're a believer. You know that the world may fall apart. You know that the coronavirus may kill you, but then you are in Jesus Christ, the older and the perfecter of your faith. If you are broke and you are in Jesus Christ, then you are rich because in Him all the glorious riches of God dwell. If you are sick, this is the great physician who is to be trusted because by His Stripes by his wounds we are healed. This is Jesus Christ to whom we must lay all our hope, all our strength, all our weaknesses. But also it is Jesus Christ in whom we have the fullness of the joy of God. Believe in him without delaying. Because he is worthy. He is to be trusted. He is to be believed. He is to be followed. You have to be his disciple when you consider the worth of the Lord. When you consider the, the preciousness of Jesus Christ, 
you cannot help but believe in Him when you consider the, the glory of the Son. How can you not follow Him and listen to Him who has the words of eternal life? How can you not listen to the Good Shepherd calling you to be the flock of His pasture and the Good Shepherd who will lead you in green pastures and by the still waters, the Lord Jesus Christ who is the great and the Good Shepherd who cares for the sheep. This is the Good Shepherd who is to be followed. And He says that His sheep hear His voice and they follow Him. They believe in Him. They trust in Him. My dear friend, why do you delay in following this, the Lord Jesus Christ? Why do you delay when the burden of sin is upon you and He is willing to take it away? He says, come to me, you who labor, and I have a lady and I will give you rest. Come to Him now. He will give you rest. He will give you sure rest. He became the curse for us, he took the curse that was pronounced in Eden upon our father, Adam, upon our mother, Eve. He, was, he took that curse. And he became a curse for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. And if you are in him, you have become the righteousness of God. If you are saved you know the wonder of what I'm talking about. You know the beauty of what I'm speaking about this morning. If you are saved, you know the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace. If you are saved, you know the wonder of being found in Jesus Christ, not having a righteousness of your own, but a righteousness that comes through faith in Him. Believe in Him this morning. Follow Him with all honestness and all faithfulness and all diligence and all commitment. And you will have all the blessings of glory conferred upon you in this life and in the one to come. You will have all the promises of God unleashed upon you and you will be forever blessed. That's the first thing we see about Jesus Christ. He is to be trusted. And then secondly, we are told here that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. But he is to us today that which he was to Abel. He is to us today what he was to Abraham who believed in Him, and it was counted to Him as righteousness. He is to us today as He was to Abraham, whom we've been reading about, and so we can sing, Hail, Abraham's God in mine. He is the same to us today as He was to the twelve disciples who followed Him and listened to Him and sat at His feet and uh, like John, we should fall at his bosom and listen to his word. He offers the same pardon to us as he offered to Mary Magdalene. And the, the demons and Satan's fell to him, fell before him. And they fall before him even this morning. And, and has he commanded Satan to go behind him? And as he said, Satan fell like lightning. Nothing like that. Satan with all his fake, uh, fake powers cannot dare stand before the Jesus Christ that I'm talking about. He is the same as he was yesterday because he is not just God of yesterday. He is God of today and of forever. But when the Bible says he is the same yesterday, it means that as he was in the beginning, when he is uh, referred to as a word in the Gospel of John 1.1. 1, 1. And the word was with God, and the word was God, the Bible says. Uh, there is that was God. It's not to say that he was God then, as opposed to now. But it's saying that he was God then and now and forever. 
and the word became flesh. It's all in the past tense. And dwelt among us and we have seen now in the present. We have seen his glory, glory as, the, as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. This makes it clear that the word added human nature to his divine nature in the person of Christ in yesterday. Therefore, Jesus, who is the word, is still divine, holy, unchanging, pure, forgiving, humble. He humbled himself and took the form of a servant, even dying upon the cross. He is the gentle Christ. He is the kind Jesus Christ, and so more and more. And at the same time, he is also a man, but God-man. Colossians 2.9 says in him, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form because he is God, he is holy, he is righteous, and his words cannot be broken. But you may ask, when Jesus became incarnate, when Jesus became, uh, when God the Son became man, is this not a change in him? No. It is not a change in what the word was. As it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, and yes, and forever. And it should amaze us and cause us to praise God when we see how God was and still is involved with His people as the Word, and so in the Old Testament, it was the pre-incarnate word that appeared to the saints. In the New Testament, Jesus was with us in person. Now he lives in us, in our hearts, as he tells us in John 14, 23. And he intercedes for us, as we read in Hebrews 7, 25. And we are told he forever lives to intercede for us. And so... The Bible is very categorical that Jesus Christ is the Word, the unchanging, changeless, yet forever changing uh, others. So this is the unchanging Word, God. Now, I must admit that uh, the cults will come to a verse like this and understand Jesus to be uh, portrayed as changing. For example, the Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jesus is Michael, the archangel who became a man and became Michael, the archangel again. The Mormons say that a spirit begotten creature in the pre-existence that became a man and then became a god. In both cults, Jesus' very nature changed. Not so in true Christianity. Both Jehovah's Witnesses and, and, the, and the Mormons are not Christian faiths, even though they claim to be. Remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, and yes, forever. So, the God of Adam, the God the, crea God the Creator, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not God of the dead. He is God of the living. But he was God then as he is God now. Nothing has been changed either to add to him or increase anything to him, nor to reduce or take away anything from him because Jesus Christ of yesterday is the Jesus Christ of today. What that means is this. All that he did to and for and with and in the saints of old, he
he is able to do today and he will be able to do tomorrow. Jesus Christ being the same yesterday as today means that how he was trusted and followed in the past is the way we who are hearing this need to follow him. And then thirdly, Jesus Christ is the same today. The Bible simply states that Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday and as he will be forever. But how is Jesus the same today? He is the same today in his essence as God, as I've already uh, pointed out from yesterday. He has not ceased to be God. He is essentially God. He is the same God in his work. He is the same God in his being. He is the, his work as the only redeemer of God's elect is the same true, is the same as it was, is the same as it will always be. He is still and will forever occupy his prophetic office, his priestly office, and his kingly offices. He is the same today in his word. His word abides and endures forever. What he spoke of old, the commands he gave and the promises he gave, he made then and what applicable then, but even more today and tomorrow. His law and his gospel is the same. His mercies are the same. His love is unchanging. His grace is undepleted. His power is the same. None of his gracious attributes have been in any way eroded by the passage of time. His gracious attributes to his people, such as his grace and his love, are unaltered. And they will never be depleted. And they are not depleted today. As he was with the saints in the Old Testament and with his disciples here on earth, helping them, guiding them. So is he also here today with you, doing the very same thing, speaking to you his word and shepherding you as his dear lambs and seeking your eternal welfare and promoting your position in heaven and rebuking you in your sins and comforting you in your afflictions. He is involved in your life and my life too, every day. And even today, He is renewing mercies. He is renewing His mercies to us every morning and renewing our minds by His Word. Because He is the same today. And He is at work today by His Spirit, of course. And I want to assure you that right now, Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of the majesty on high, is concerned for your spiritual good. And he wants you to be edified by the knowledge of his immediate care for you. Jesus Christ is not a, theoret a theoretical or amorphous or abstract Christ or presence, but he is concrete, dependable, trustworthy in all our daily uh, dealings, and he is involved. So when you, you cook your cup of tea or take a walk around your estate, or when you pluck a flower from a, a rose flower or pluck out a wind from your garden, or when you write a note or you send a text or you make a call, the Lord Jesus Christ is involved in your life. And he knows you're having food on your plate and picking it up on a spoon and putting it in your mouth. He is involved with us as we speak with our 
uh, husbands or our wives or our children or our bosses. The Lord Jesus Christ is guiding people and bringing some of you closer to your future spouses. And he watches over your every move. And the Bible says that he is right now interceding for you at the right hand of God and wants you to be a godly person or a godly uh, child. He wants you to know God's perfect and pleasing will. And he wants you to obey God in his word and to make each faithful saying yours. So Jesus Christ is involved in you. He is the one who pricks your conscience when you're being tempted to wonder, should I do this or should I not do this? By his spirit, he convicts you and tells you, do not do that and gives you strength to endure and to overcome the temptation. But sometimes you get persistent. You say, no, Lord, you said that, but I will do it. Now, how can you, how can you call him Lord and say, no, Lord? You know, it's a contradiction of terms. If he is your Lord, you need to listen to him. But then sometimes you say, no, Lord. And he lets you like the way a father would let the child who is insisting on touching the, the flame and seeing the beauty. The, the father would say, yeah, you can touch it and you get burnt. That, that's how the Lord does with us sometimes. Yes, he is involved, but he lets our will prevail so that we may feel the pain of disobeying him. And so he works very closely with our consciences. But some of us are very, very working hard to harden our consciences against him and to resist what he is telling us in his word and impressing upon us in convictions as the Spirit of God works with our consciences. So he is involved. He involved today. And so involved, I dare say, that he sent the coronavirus this year and not last year or not next year. And now coronavirus is going to affect generations to come and that to bring them to their knees before his feet. Jesus Christ is the same today and he's at work today. He is not some watchmaker-like creator who, having worked in creation, abandoned the world to go its own way. Uh, he's not abandoned us to fate. He has not left us to uh, under the mercy of circumstances and coincidences and fate. No, he is at work, involved at every turn, every point, every second. He is at work. Just like his father is working, he said, I am also working. And he is working. And finally, Jesus Christ is the same forever. The Lord Jesus Christ is God who inhabits eternity. He is not bowed by the same clock. He doesn't have a wristwatch like me, uh, having to count every minute and every second. The Lord Jesus Christ does not need to wear a wristwatch because he inhabits eternity. He is not only the Alpha, but also the Omega. He is both the beginning and the end, the older and the finisher. Never in all eternity, will you have to worry about God failing or about God changing his mind like man, about his promises to you and I, or about being rejected in any way if you are in him. Christ is God and he cannot change. He cannot break a promise. He cannot stop loving you. He cannot cast you away. Uh, this is so all very comforting. Now, is this to say that the Lord Jesus Christ cannot respond with joy 
over your victories one day and grieve over your failures in another day? Would that contradict the statement that Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever? The best way to answer this question I can think of is to look for another place in the Bible, and especially in the book of Hebrews, where Jesus Christ is seen to be the, the same. Look at uh, Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1, verse, verse 12. Perhaps let's read verse 8 all the way. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Verse 10. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same. But you are the same. And your years will have no end. That verse, God speaks of the Son, that is Jesus Christ, and he says, your throne, O God. This is the Father calling the Son God. Because your throne, O God, O God there is a reference to Jesus Christ. And he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And then verse 10, you... He says, Lord, that is Christ, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment. And in verse 11, he discusses this immutability. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will also be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. So in what sense, then, is Christ the same? And why is this such a significant declaration about Christ? Now, Christ, as I've already been saying, is the same with regard to his divinity. It is most significant that in these verses, Jesus is called God. He's called the Son of God, and he is called God, and God himself calls him Lord. Now, this is not a doctrine that I am manufacturing. It's right here in the pages of Scripture that Jesus Christ is God. The older also ascribes to Christ, and you realize that he is quoting Psalms. He ascribes him the work of creation of the universe, not just of the earth, but of the heavens. Before drawing the amazing conclusion there that even though the creation seems so stable and permanent and perpetual and, and changeless, it will in fact be changed like a garment. The contrast that with the fact of Christ's immutability, but you are the same and your years will have no end, Clearly, the sameness of Jesus Christ is the sameness that comes from being the eternal God. Even as it is already stated in verse 3, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. Glory be to His name. This is Jesus Christ, the very God of the very God. He is the same forever. He inhabits eternity from everlasting to everlasting 
He is God. God to be loved. God to be believed. God to be trusted. God to be, God to be adored and to be worshipped. Now, as I close them, I think I've explained this verse to you. How do we then face tomorrow in light of the fact that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow? How do we apply this to our own lives, to our families, to our situations at school and at work? How, do we, how is this relevant to us when we are faced by this global pandemic, which has now become endemic? How do we deal with this fact in light of what is around us? I want to say, first of all, that this same Jesus is the same Savior yesterday and today and forever. He is the same Savior. Has he been saving people in the past? Yes? Has Jesus Christ been saving sinners in the past? Has he told people, a sinner, your sins are forgiven yesterday? He is still able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him. Jesus is eternally the same. And this unchanging Jesus Christ has given us the complete and final salvation by his work. And he has given us complete and final revelation of God's salvation. This can never be superseded or supplemented by something better. It is the final word. He has given us the good news. He has given us the gospel. He has told us in the gospel, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In John 14 verse 6. Regarding this unchanging Jesus, is apostle Peter preached and said, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. In Acts chapter 4 verse 2. So I invite you by the mercies of God to come to him, to trust him today, and you will be saved. Jesus Christ, the Savior of Young sinners as well as old sinners. The savior of male sinners as well as female sinners. Jesus Christ is the savior of great sinners. Even the foremost of sinners like Paul and myself. And he is able to save you. This same Jesus saves now. And he is able to save you now. You do not need to delay. You do not need to hesitate. To come to him. And then secondly, in terms of application, is that he is the reason to persevere in the faith. This is the reason. And I want to just echo the words of John Calvin because I think he very, very clearly puts this. He says, the only way by which we can persevere in the right faith is to hold to the foundation and not in the slightest degree depart from it. For he who holds not to Christ knows nothing but mere vanity, though he may comprehend heaven and earth. So Christian doctrine does not fluctuate with the times because Jesus does not change. He is the same yesterday, today. And forever, the same in his identity, the same in his divine offices as prophet, priest, and king, the same in his efficacy, and the same in his eternal will. His truth does not change, therefore the doctrine of Christ does not change. And when we know that that's the fact, that's the case, we should not be wavering in our faith. Because we know that our Savior is unwavering in his salvation. 
And so we persevere in the faith. And thirdly, the unchanging care of Jesus Christ to his people is underscored here. John Brown wrote in 1662, 1862 in his commentary on Hebrews, he says, Men's opinions are constantly changing. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. His doctrines are invariable. He ever lives. And his affection and care of his people are unchangeable. And unchangeable. He ever lives. And he ever lives to protect and bless those who put their confidence in him. He adds, let Jesus Christ be the same yesterday and today and forever. Let him be the same to you. He is the same in himself. His person is suddenly divine. His doctrine is true. His promises are as trustworthy. His laws as wise and good as ever they were. You embraced him as your savior and your teacher and your Lord. Why should you abandon him when he would never ever abandon you? Christians are so blessed to be in Christ. They have his righteousness. They have his position. They are God's children on the account of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, having saved them. All the tender cares of Christ, all the tender mercies and comforting care of God the Father are ours on the account of Christ. So here is unchanging care of Jesus Christ to his people. And then fourthly, here is a call to be trustworthy and dependable as our master. Because Jesus Christ is unchangeable in his being, power, glory, should we not seek to follow him in his trustworthiness, even as we delight in this fact? The eternal Son of God remains the same forever. He is not unstable and fickle. And Andrew Murray wrote back in 1894, and he said, in the book, The Holiest of All. All that he was yesterday, he is today. All that he was yesterday in the past of the great eternity as the object of the Father's delight and the bearer and dispenser of the Father's life and love, he is today. All that he was yesterday in his life upon earth with his meek, and gentle and sympathizing heart he is today. All that he has been on his throne in setting down his spirit, in working mighty things in and on behalf of his church, in revealing himself in joy unspeakable to trusting soul, in meeting and blessing you who read this, he is today. All that he is, he can be to you today. And the only reason that you ever had to look back to a yesterday that was better than today was that you did not know or that you failed to trust this Jesus who was waiting to make each today a new revelation and a larger experience of the grace of yesterday. He adds, yes, all that he has been, he will be forever, even from henceforth, from the present moment, and forevermore. And all that he will be forever, he has at this moment for you. Think of him in the fullest revelation of his glory, in the inconceivable closeness of the union with him and his love, which shall be yours hereafter. And let faith say, all that he ever will be, he is today. All that he can in eternity, be, in eternity be, he is today. The same today and forever. Amid all the changes in the church and the circumstances around us, or in our hearts within us, in this word is a strength and a joy nothing can take away. And because Jesus Christ 
is the same yesterday and today and forever. And you bear his image as one who has been saved by him. And you are his property as one who has been redeemed and purchased by his blood. And because you are his disciple, should you, should, should you not be like your teacher? And so here is a call to be consistent. Here is a call to be trustworthy. Here is a call to be dependable because our master is dependable and he is trustworthy. Now I ask you, would your children say that you are a trustworthy dad? Would your boss say that you are a trustworthy and dependable worker on the account of being in Jesus Christ? When history is being written, would it be known that you lived a life of consistency and faithfulness in all your labors, in all your words? Are you laboring to go that direction? Or are you saying, we are sinners in despair? You are being challenged here that your Savior is the same yesterday and today and forever. And how can you be striving to be less than that? I ask you. And when that has been said, then I rest my case by saying, Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Therefore, every day will bow and worship Him. For God has highly exalted Him. And God has given him a name that is above all other names. Right now, today, claim and trust this unchanging Jesus as your life. An intimate, personal love relationship with him never disappoints. It means that you can always count on you. But will you be the one who has fallen at his feet in hum humble adoration. Are you paying homage to this Jesus? He doesn't change. Though the world changes, circumstances change, change, people change, and you change, Jesus never does. It is so sweet. To trust in Jesus and to know him more and more. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in our believers here. It is music, isn't it? It sounds like music in believers here. It is sweet. It is glorious to think about Jesus Christ who is, a, who is the same yesterday and today and forever. And so we should all come before him in holy homage, in worship and offer praises to him. He is God, worthy to be praised.